Today, we're going to look at measures of center and spread. Data can be categorized by measures of center and spread, and most of these terms you are familiar with. Measures of center are things like mean, and what might be new to you is the symbol that we use to represent mean, an X with a bar over it. Of course, mean is our average, so if you wanted to find it by hand, you would add all of your data values together and divide by the number of values in that data set. Second measure of center is median. That is our middle term. When we list our numbers in order from least to greatest, when there's an even number of data set um, values, then you can average the two middle values together to find your median. The third measure of center that we have is mode, which is the value that occurs the most often in our data set. Data set. There can be more than one mode or there can be no mode. So uh, mean, median, and mode, ways that we can measure the center of our data sets. Measures of spread, how vast our data is. So you are probably very familiar with range and that would be the difference between the maximum and minimum. So subtract your maximum and minimum value to find your range in your data. And then we also have interquartile range or IQR. Um, we'll see this come up when we review box plots or box and whisker plots. That's the difference or the range between that upper and lower quartile. For the example below, we're going to use the calculator. I'm going to show you how the calculator can produce some of these statistical values for you. The example we're going to use is Nadia collected data from 15 classmates about the number of text messages that they send on school days. And so there you can see our data set. We're going to find the mean, right? This, value, this uh, symbol here represents mean, median, mode, range, and IQR using the calculator. So let me grab that for us. All right, from a new document, we're going to go to list and spreadsheets number four. So, so far we've used calculator, we've used graph. Number four, we're going to use list and spreadsheets today with these statistical values. And we're going to enter each of our values into column A. So we have 14. You can use the enter button or you can arrow down. So I'm going to model both. I'm going to use enter. Notice it takes me to the next value, box um, 17. I could use the arrow down and it does the same thing. 4, 19, 8, 23, 19, 9, 22, 15, 18, 26, 0, 25, and 16. Now in the problem it said Nadia had collected 15 students, 15 classmates um, data. And so looking at my columns, I do, I am on the 15th row. Go ahead and enter or arrow down out of that. And so the next thing we're going to do is look over here. We're going to do um, menu statistics, number four year statistics, number one stat calculations, number one, one variable statistics. So this means there's only one column. So when we look at scatter plots, when there's X and Y, we'll do two variable. But right now we're just working with one column, one list, one variable statistics. We're not going to change this number of lists. There is only one list here. So use the tab key to take you to OK. And I don't need to change anything here either. All the defaults are going to work just fine. So use the tab key to take you to OK. And you're going to have a list of statistical values here right beside your, your data. Now, notice on the list, the last thing I say is arrow up to see all of it. So this is the very end of it. Keep arrowing up and you can see we've got a lot more information. At the top, it starts with title and then the one variable statistics that it's come out with. Our first line here, and I've got it on our notes here, that X with the bar over it, that's our mean. And for this problem, the mean is 15.666 repeating. If I can't see it all in the little cell box, box there on the spreadsheet, look, it is listed at the very bottom. Um, C2 equals 15.6666. So if I need to round it and I just can't see enough values in the box, look at the bottom there. That EX is sum of data. We're not going to use that. EX squared, we're not going to use that. SX, we're not going to use. OX, we're not going to use. N can be helpful for you to check. N is going to be the number of values in the data set. So if I wanted to make sure, did I enter them all? I could check here. I did enter 15 values. Minimum is zero. That'll be helpful for us. 
Q1 is 9, median is 17, Q3 22, maximum 26, SSX we're not using um, in this class. So there's your data values. Let's answer our questions for this example. So like I said, our um, mean here is 15.666. It was repeating. I'm just going to round it to um, the hundredths place um, for this example and say 15.67. Our median value is down here, it's 17, taking it straight from the calculator. Mode is not on the calculator. You just have to use your eyeballs um, and look. So is there another 14 in our list? No. Is there another 17 in our list? No. Is there another four in our list? No, 19, ah. Yes, I have two 19s and you can keep going through this and double checking, but I did it in advance. So I know 19 is our only mode value. Range is not specifically given on our calculator. We just need to find that maximum and subtract our minimum. So let me grab the calculator. Our maximum is towards the bottom 26 and leaving it here on the screen, you can see the minimum is zero. So it's 26 minus zero it means our range is 26. Same with IQR, it is not specifically on our calculator, but we can find that Q3 and subtract it with Q1. Let's go and look on the calculator. Q3 was 22, Q1 is nine. So I'm gonna do 22 minus nine is gonna give me 13, okay? So I've got the note there at the bottom again to emphasize the calculator will not give you mode range or IQR, you find them by hand. Now mode completely by hand for range, they gave us minimum and maximum. IQR, they gave us the Q1 and Q3 to subtract. So let's try those calculator steps again with the examples below one and two. We're gonna find the mean and the median from the data set. If you wanna do it by hand, more you're more than welcome to do that. Mean, you would add them all up and divide by the number of values. Median, you would need to list them in order, at least to greatest and find the center value. I'm gonna use a calculator just to model. I'm gonna open up a new tab on my screen. I'm gonna do control um, doc for this time, adding list and spreadsheets. We're gonna type in 29, enter 13, enter 50, 17, and 39. Menu, make sure you're out of that last box that we put the 39 in. Menu, statistics, stat calculations, one variable statistics, 411. All of this stays the same. Hit your OK buttons using the tab key. Arrow up to see more. The list wasn't very long, so I was already near the top. Our mean is 29.6. Our median is going to be down here is 29. Modeling again for number two. So last time I did control doc to open a new tab. You can also do control I to insert a new tab. We're still doing list and spreadsheets. I'm gonna type in seven, 12, five, and 18. This one is not a long list. It wouldn't be a big deal to um, solve it by hand, but just modeling on the calculator, menu, statistics, stat calculations, one variable statistics. All of this is good to leave and go down to the tab to the OK button with our tab key. Our mean is 10.5. Our median is 9.5. And on the last page, we have one more section, um, mostly just interpreting um, the given calculator information. So this is gonna be given to you on Delta Math. Notice it looks just like our calculator. So this is just practicing. Do you know how to read these in, these outputs from the calculator? Number three, based on the calculator output, determine the mean and round to the nearest hundredth if necessary. This is our mean. Cute little X bar represents mean. It is 171.1428, on and on and on. It said round to the nearest hundredths. That's the one in the four, two decimal places. The two says, let it rest. So our mean rounded to the nearest hundredth, 171 and 14 hundredths. Number four, based on the calculator output, determine the range. Remember that's gonna be maximum minus minimum. 
that specific value is not there on the calculator, but I can use our maximum and minimum to figure it out. 243 minus 131 will give me 112 is our range. Number five, based on the calculator output, determine the interquartile range or the IQR. Again, not specifically on this list. However, I can take the Q3 and subtract the Q1 that is provided. Here's Q3 and Q1. So 198 minus 132 gives me 66. IQR, 66 based on our calculator output. So there's our lesson on measures of center and spread. Utilizing the calculator to help us find those values, very helpful when our data set is much larger. But on Delta Math, you're finding the mean and median like we modeled in number one and two. And then you're also reading the calculator output that Delta Math provides to find mean, range, and IQR. Guys, let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in class.